Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I am the Crypto Crow. And uh, today we're going to be talking about becoming recession proof uh, because this is something that I really don't think many people consider on a regular basis. It's something I think about almost daily. And, uh, you know, there's the. There are a lot of different ways that you can kind of hedge your assets, your lifestyle, your, you know, whatever it is against the changing climate of the traditional markets, the housing markets, the the recession uh, that we are, in, in my opinion, I guess you should say, <laughs> wink, wink, nod, nod, uh, definitely in. There's just so much happening. Um, for, for fun and giggles, always make sure you remember, check out the Murder of Crows NFTs. Uh, you can mint up to 10 at a time. It's just a fun thing. Lots of different uh, variations to the Murder of Crows NFTs. This is on the Cardano blockchain. She's Nami wallet if, you, if, you, if you're going to grab some. Now, we're going to talk about this, how to financially prepare for a recession. And we're going to go over some of these tips with some of my own thoughts, uh, as well as things that I'm doing, as well as some ideas. A recession is a period of economic decline that can impact individuals and businesses alike. It's important to take steps to prepare for a recession to help minimize the potential negative impact on your finances. Here are some strategies to consider. Uh, first on the list is building an emergency fund. The idea is you're building an emergency fund where it's just it's money you leave alone and you just add to as you can and you don't touch it under any circumstances because if you were to lose your job, and typically you want like three to six months of, of, of money um, so that if you were to lose your job, if something were to happen, you get downsized or whatever the case may be, you have a three to six month bumper to carry you on to either your next career, your next job, whatever it is that you're doing. And this is this is definitely a big deal. So basically you wanna make sure that you have all the funds necessary to continue living your life for three to six months to cover your mortgage, your rent, your groceries, your fuel, your whatever it is, to basically cover your bills. So take what take what you spend in a month on all of your, 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 your accounting, uh, all of your bills, Multiply that by three to six times, and that's what you really want to have in an emergency account you do not touch. Uh, and then you're going to take an account uh, for inflation if you want. <laughs> during, a session, losing a, during a recession, losing a job and struggling to find a new one is a possibility. Without an emergency fund, relying on credit cards or loans to pay bills and living expenses can lead to accumulating debt and financial stress. It's just basically not going to make your life any easier if you're trying to live on credit cards in the interim between uh, positions or, or what have you. Pay down debt. Paying down debt is another critical step to take into preparation for a recession. Well... Oftentimes, what people do when, during a recession is they add to their debt because it's just easier. And they think, well, I'll just buy this, I'll pay for that, and I'll throw it on my credit card, I'll pay for it later. And the problem is, is that like with me, uh, any credit card uh, payments or any, any credit I use, I pay off at the end of every month. Um, because the interest rates are so ridiculous and it's so high, but... I use my credit card because I get bonuses, I get points, I get different things that may help me in the future, um, as well as it enables me to do chargebacks or something. If, if I buy a product or a service and it's bad and they fight it or whatever, I can do a chargeback on my cards with no problem. And ultimately that screws the seller. So if somebody's trying to screw me, I am able to screw them. You can't really do that with a debit card that comes right out of your bank account. The banks don't really do anything to help you there. Um, so it, it, it is what it is, but you do want to try and pay down your debt uh, and, and have as little debt as possible so that if something were to go wrong, you basically have less to be accountable for in the long term uh, or the short term. Cut back on discretionary spending. Uh, in other words, you know, until especially until you have your your three to six months worth of, of reserves, you don't want to go out and spend a bunch of money on a bunch of things you don't need that don't matter. Um, you know, maybe instead of getting a hundred and fifty dollar pair of Nikes, you get a you know forty dollar pair of shoes. Or um, instead of spending a bunch of money on bougie brand name clothing, maybe you go the, the the less expensive route until things recover, until things get better. 
you know, uh, it's funny too because I watched uh, I watched this TikTok video about this Italian clothing designer, and he said there are two different brands, there are two different uh, styles of clothing uh, in in our world. There's the the uh, I forget what he called them, but one is the 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 brand brand where it's like you know you got your Gucci shirt and it just says Gucci across the front. It's like an eight hundred dollar T shirt or whatever, and then you have the oh that's what it was the popper or the aristocrat. So the popper brand is basically the one all the poor people buy. The really over expensive, flashy, trashy, look at me, I spent all this money on this shirt because I got so much money. But in reality, you spent your entire paycheck on that one shirt just to try and look important or cool. And then you have the aristocratic brand, which is basically the more uh, low key, you don't see the the logo or the brand anywhere, but it's still a Gucci shirt, but you don't, it's not super flashy and it's more about the style and the fit. It's what fashion is supposed to be about, right? And and, they, and he basically made a point that the people that wear all the flash and trash are the ones that are always trying to boast and brag and show off what they have or don't have. And the real true wealth don't feel like they need to run around flashing it. They buy the clothes because of the way it fits. And, and that's a really good point. Diversify your investments. I am diversified. I'm not necessarily in the stock market, but I am diversified in crypto. I do have assets in, a, in, in, in multiple bank accounts because if something were to happen to one, I don't want to be, you know, completely exposed. And so, you know, when you're talking about p putting significant capital in bank accounts, if you're worried about a bank collapse or you're worried about, you know, the sentiment contagion, as they call it right now, where people are thinking, oh my gosh, the banks could close down. I got to get my money out and it just continue perpetuating this this kind of narrative um you know realistically i believe that the banks that have been shut down or that have gone under or the crypto friendly banks that are targeted by those who do not want people to be able to easily get in and out of cryptocurrency through a bank account that's just my my thing and in that it's created this sentiment contagion where it's like oh my gosh banks are collapsing even some of the biggest banks in the world that have that are responsible for the most assets that means my bank is likely at risk as well i need to get out and i need to put my money in a coffee can and you know the reality is is nowadays banks aren't paying anything for holding money there anyway it's more of just a a, a vehicle it's a custody vehicle like here's your money it's all sitting in one safe, secure place, hopefully, and you can access it with our card. But crypto is encroaching on all of that functionality with actual payouts, with actual yield, some higher than others. And, and it's creating a big, big problem for these banking institutions, regulators, and those that are basically funded and fueled by the traditional markets as we know them. And, and they're really trying to wrap their hands around the space and control it and, and, and kind of rein it in. And they start with these banks and it created a much bigger problem because they're like everything else, they go about it the wrong way um, consider your job security which is a given um, if you're in IT if you're in tech if you're in computing programming any of that kind of stuff you're probably safe because there's the the the, the need for coders and developers and programmers and graphic designers and well graphic designers I mean realistically here you know if you're not already I highly encourage you to start learning AI uh, learning chat GPT, learning how to utilize it to, to generate money. Because I'm gonna be doing a video in the future here about what I'm going to do as kind of a case study experiment on how I can utilize our, uh, artificial intelligence art to generate revenue that I put directly into like buying Cardano over the next two years. And what does that amount to? Um, and, and it's basically, it's gonna help me because I'm kind of learning some new stuff. And as I'm learning it, I'm gonna teach it. So stick around for that. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, hit the a notification bell because that will be a good video. I've been working on it for a little while. Are cryptocurrencies recession proof? Um, to some degree they are, uh, but you know, true recession proof things are really um, your vices, your, your liquors, your gambling, your you know, things that people resort to in a time of depression. Um, you know, there are, there are several in, in healthcare, really. Uh, a good friend of mine has been in the healthcare industry for a long time, does very, very well. And it doesn't really matter what the world is doing. People always need to go to the hospital for something. There's always something wrong with someone somewhere out there. And so that that's a recession proof industry. And so when you're talking about crypto, crypto isn't necessarily something everybody needs no matter what, or it's not necessarily a, a soothing vice if, if things start to go down in your life. You know, you don't, 
you, you don't have a really bad day and you're like, I just need to feel better about this. I, I could either go get a drink or I could go buy some crypto. That's, that's not how it works. But, um, you know, in a nutshell, what this all boils down to is it, you need to really understand kind of where you are financially and, and, and make plans for what's to come, what could potentially happen. And if you're in a career that you know is not very recession proof, it's time to learn some new trades. It's time to learn some new things. Start learning AI. I'm telling you, things like mid journey, stable diffusion um, for art and, and, and basically being able to sell prints and posters. And, and things like that to other people. That's a really big deal. Creating game assets, the Web3, universe, metaverse, whatever you want to call it, it's going to continue building and growing. Being able to uh, offer assets for these groups um, could be a really big win. There's just so much. Uh, and so make sure you you, you consider those things. And, and yeah, I mean, that's it in a nutshell. I just wanted to kind of show you guys, you know, some of the things you can consider. Um, you know, the one thing I touched on real quick that I forgot is, you know, if you, if you have a substantial sum of money and you're trying to break it up amongst the banks, it's one thing to put, you know, 250 grand into an account and then, you know, do joint accounts with the rest of your family. So you can open up multiple accounts and still get that um, FDIC uh, insurance uh, on all of your capital so that if, if a bank goes under each one of those accounts is protected up to 250 grand um and that's it until next time crow your coins and i'll be back with some pretty interesting stuff see you soon